In this video, you will learn how to solve equations with fractional coefficients. So basically, we're working with equations that has fractions. So for example, if you had x over 2 minus x over 8 equals 5, how would you solve this? Now, the quick way to do this is to get rid of the fractions. And to make that happen, what I can do is find the least common denominator and then multiply everything by that. So looking at 2 and 8, the least common denominator would be 8. So I multiply everything by the 8. So 8 times the first term, 8 times the second term, and then 8 times this other side, so 8 times 5. When I do that for the first term, 8 or 8 over 1 times x over 2, 8 and the 2 can divide. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So that's going to be 4 times x. The second term, 8 or 8 over 1, that can divide with the other 8 down here, and that gives me 1. So I have 4x minus 1x equals 5 times 8, which is 40. And then 4x minus 1x is 3x. And then I can divide both sides by 3. And that's going to give me x equals 40 over 3. And that's my solution. So this one concept of multiplying everything by the least common denominator is going to make solving much, much easier. Example 2, we have x over 3 plus 2 equals 1 over 6. We look at all the denominators, which would be 3 and 6, and determine what is the least common denominator of the 3 and 6. Well, that is going to be 6. So I then multiply everything by 6. So 6 times the first term, we would have the 6 and the 3 would divide out. That would give me 2 over 1. 6 times 2 is 12. And then 6 times 1 over 6, the 6's would divide, and that gives me 1 over 1. So what I have is 2 times the x plus 12 equals 1. And then to solve, I can do reverse order of operations. So I can subtract 12 from both sides. It gives me 2x equals negative 11 and then divide both sides by 2, x would equal negative 11 over 2. And that is my solution. So once again, notice that multiplying by the least common denominator right here at this step gets rid of all the fractions. Example 3, we now have 4b over 5 plus b over 3 equals 11 over 30. So I have a 5, a 3, and a 30 and I can find the least common denominator, and that would be 30. So I then multiply everything by 30. So when I do that for the first term, 30 and 5 would divide out. That gives me 6. Second term, 30 and 3 would divide to give me 10. And on the other side, 30 divided by 30 would give me 1. So I have 6 times 4b, which is 24b plus 10 times b, which is 10b, and then 1 times 11 is 11. And then from here I can solve. We have 34b on the left side, and then we can divide both sides by 34. That's going to give me b on the left, and then that will be equal to 11 over 34. Okay, here's another example where now we have multiple terms on the numerator. Still the same process where I have a 4 and a 5 for denominators and I need to find the least common denominator so that I can multiply everything by that. So the least common denominator of 4 and 5 would be 20. So I multiply everything by 20. So for the first term, 20 times x over 4, 20 divided by 4 would cancel. That gives me 5 over 1. And then the second term, 20 divided by 5 would give me 4, so 4 over 1, and then 20 times 3 would be 60. So from here we have 5x and then minus 4 times 2x plus 3 equals 60. Now be careful right here with this minus 4. All right, we have this negative 4 is going to be multiplied 
by everything here in parentheses. So we have 5x and then minus 8x. And negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. And that, that is equal to 60. So then we have 5x minus 8x is negative 3x. And then from here we can solve by adding 12 to both sides. That will cancel. I have negative 3x equals 72. And then divide both sides by negative 3. That's going to give me x equals 72 over negative 3, which would be negative, and that would be 24. So my solution is negative 24. And I can double check if I wanted by plugging the negative 24 back in, and we would see that we would get a true statement back out. Here is another example. So once again, we have a common denominator, or we need a common denominator. Uh, so we have 3 and 5, and the least common denominator would be 15. So in this case, I multiply everything by 15. So when I do that for the first term, 15 times 3y is 45y. So 45y here, and then the 15 and the 3 can divide to give me 5. So we have plus 5 times the y equals, and then we have 15 divided by 5 would give me 3 over 1. So we have 3 times y over there. And 15 times 6, that would give me 90. Now on the left side, these can combine. We have 50y. And then we can bring the y's to the same side by subtracting 3y, and that would move it over to this side. So on the left, we have 47y. On the right, we have 90. And then get rid of the 47 by dividing. So we have y equals 90 over 47. And that is my solution. So once again, notice that multiplying by that least common denominator at this step right here will get rid of all the fractions. Here is one final example where now we have a quadratic expression. So we see an x squared this time. Now it's all the same process. We want to get rid of the fractions, and we do that by multiplying by the least common denominator. So we see a 2, 15, and 10. And the least common denominator of all of those would be 30. So then you multiply every single part by 30. So for the first term, 30 divided by 2 would give me 15. For the second part right here, we would have 30 divided by 15. That's going to give me 2. And then for the last part, 30 divided by 10 would give me 3. So I now have 15 times x squared equals 2 times 2x is 4x plus 3 times 1, which is 3. Now from here to solve, I need to set this equal to 0 because this is a quadratic expression. So I need to bring this 4x and the 3 over to the left side. So when I subtract to bring it over, I now have 0 on the right. And on the left, we have 15x squared minus 4x minus 3. Now to solve this, I will need to factor. Now to factor, I could do trial and error. And when I do this, I'd get 3x and 5x. That would give me 15x squared. And then to get negative 3, I need a 3 and a 1. So if I put the 3 over here and the 1 over here, and then let's make the 3 negative and the 1 positive. That would multiply to give me negative 3 back out for the last term. And then we'd have 5x and negative 9x, which would give me negative 4x for that middle term. So we have factored, and everything is equal to 0. So I know that one of these two expressions must equal 0. So either 3x plus 1 equals 0, or 5x minus 3 equals 0. So I can solve each of these. We have 3x equals negative 1. Divide by 3, x would equal negative 1 over 3. For the second part, we can add 3. 
So we have 5x equals 3. And then divide both sides by 5. So now we have x equals 3 over 5. So I have two possible answers. And my answers are negative 1 third or x equals 3 over 5. And that concludes our lesson for today. We will see you next time.